Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jennifer C. at HomeLifeCultureLink.com, Nino Saimeka at MortgageGodfather.ca, and Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca. Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this This is is The the Sit Sit Down Down with with Scott Scott Dion Dion Brown. What a beautiful morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Welcome to episode. I can, I can hear you. No, he's talking to the viewers. <laughs> 99. We can wow. hear him. Welcome to episode 99 of the sit down. Oh, you can't hear me. I muted. What? 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 Okay, what's going on? Why I'm can't watching me? on my phone right now. No, you guys I can can't hear, hear you me? on the t- on you the computer, Scott. You're fine. It's like a silhouette of yeah, Toronto. Right. Oh no, I wait. I can hear you on my laptop. Oh, there's like a delay. There's like a delay on the audio. You're not muted. People are even saying wait. you're not muted. There's a delay on the audio. Yeah, someone just said that. Yeah, but it's but no, I. Like you're talking, but yeah, it's but not I just turned delay. on this thing and my voice is doo People said that. <laughs> Hello. No, I know I'm not muted, but I'm delayed. Look at look at my voice. Look at my voice on the thing. It's delayed. Yes. Yes. Great. How do we fix this? Oh man. Hello. <laughs> okay, well this is interesting. How do we fix this exactly? I'm not Start even over. sure. This is a weird thing to happen. Ceiling fans. Basin. Check. Check, check, check. Check, check. Someone said try plugging and unplugging. <laughs> Well, now that's like slightly delayed by like a few seconds. Great. Welcome to a live show, ladies and gentlemen. All you hear are voices, but you don't see the people talking. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What should we do? Can we do? I don't know if we can do a whole show like this. Although you guys don't hear me delayed, right? It's only the audience that hears me no. delayed. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll try it. Do okay. you want to start over? Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, go off and make a brand new video, you mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and to think we got out of her pajamas for yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think it's fine enough, Dr- Regine. I think they can hear me. Okay, guys, we're going to live with it. Unfortunately, I'm delayed by a second, but I think everybody else can hear me, so I think we're going to try to roll with it. Hello, I'm Scott Dion Brown. This is episode 99 of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. I don't know why it's acting crazy, this stuff, but sometimes technical difficulties. You'll notice we started late. We started late because we were having other technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Just how it goes. But uh, good morning. Astro Void YT, how are you? HDH Claps, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Daryl, how are you? One Daryl, what's going on? Zach Attack is here. Hello, Zach Attack. Boozy is here as well. Hi to you all. And I am uh, your host, Scott Dion Brown, and I'm joined, as always, by just the greatest co-host in all the galaxy, the one, the only... Regina Elena. Happy Sunday, everyone. Episode 99. 
I can't like grasp the fact that our hundredth episode is next week, Scott. A hundred. No, it's crazy. <laughs> One hundred episodes, Regina. It's so it doesn't feel like it's possible. That I don't feel like we've been doing the show oh, that we've been doing the show long enough to, to make that 100? a possible number. Yeah. And if you uh, think about it, next year, this time, it'll be around 150. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I guess it will. It's, uh, well, it's been a pretty, um, it's been a pretty wild ride, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. Lots of cool, like, I, I, I went back, I guess, last week when I was sort of just on the computer. Just, interestingly, I just jumped on a few, um... I watched some of the older episodes. Oh, and, gosh. Uh, <laughs> and it was, uh, it's it's pretty cool seeing, like, there are things that, I guess when you do so many of these, you start to forget some of the stuff that you've done. I mean, we've done literally a hundred of them. Mm-hmm. But just looking at some of the episodes and seeing the different studios and how the the format, well, the format hasn't really changed that much, but... but The different guests that we've had. Yeah. The different segments. The same outfits that you've had. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've worn the same outfit now since we started since doing it on COVID. Skype, right? No, yeah. actually, no. You changed your outfit once. You wore a hockey sweater. Oh yeah, for once, for the playoffs. Other than that. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's been pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, so next week, everybody, make sure you tune in for our 100th episode. And we're gonna be we'll talk more about it in the show, but uh, we have a draw. A special giveaway, courtesy of Jewelry Forever, where you people can win a beautiful ring, a, a, a white gold uh-huh. diamond ring. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But uh, smash that like button, everybody, if you haven't yet. And uh, Regine, how are you doing? I'm all right. Um, a lot better than the previous weeks. Um, I put out a unboxing video for the first time on my YouTube channel, which I probably took inspiration from all your unboxing videos, but I did one, um, and it's out there, and I hope you guys watch it after this episode. <laughs> yes, I put the link in the description for Regine's new video, the uh, unboxing of the uh, m- the Miss to Mrs. box, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's uh, very exciting. So guys, make sure you subscribe to Regine. Uh, again, link in the description down below. Uh, what did I get up to this week? I uh... Yes, Scott, what did you do? I never ask you. I'm so sorry. What did well, you do okay. this week? <laughs> yeah, what did I do this week? Um, oh, I, I did some video work. I, had, I, I filmed a music video for somebody. And uh, always kept things. I mean, again, because we're still, in fact, we're in the second wave still. Um, mm-hmm. So we filmed, obviously, just working outside, wearing a mask and everything. But uh, it's nice to be out there working again. It's fun. But Does it inspire you to get back into music? Y- yeah, I mean, I want to. I mean, that's on my list of things to do. But I've, I've got to finish. There's a few other projects I need to finish before I dive into another one. I have a, I'm have notoriously bad at... Uh, like, oh, there's yeah. so many things I want to do where I keep <laughs> taking on new things. And, you know, if you take on too many things and you, get, you finish nothing, you know what I mean? But, uh... Yeah. Should we uh should we bring in our guests? We should. They're they're itching to get onto the show, so let's bring them on. All right. Yeah, and you know what? Our guests today, I'm uh I'm very interested to uh to chat with them because you know, as we were just talking about, you know, COVID, I mean, the three guests that we have on the show today are um well, the reason we're interviewing them, I guess, is because they're part of a new type of event a new type of pageant uh that i guess wouldn't really it's a it is a new pageant right so it wouldn't even exist if it weren't for this situation yeah is that accurate we'll find out we should ask them okay (laughs) bring them on and ask them so let's why don't we introduce we can introduce them one at a time because i have a bio for each of them um so so first i'll read a little bit about should i read a bit about the pageant or maybe i'll let them tell us about the pageant yeah, let's do that. They could tell us about the pageant. <laughs> All right. So our first guest, our first guest is a wife, a teacher, a traveler, an adventurer, a lifestyle model, volunteer, and pageant enthusiast. She's been married to her husband for over 10 years, and they have a Russian blue kitten named Ulush. Or Ul- I'll have to get, the, oh, she'll have to find out the proper pronunciation. <laughs> um, she's a teacher by trade with a master's of education degree from the University of Toronto. 
She's worked with students as a teacher, coach, and mentor for the last 15 years, and has various experience working inside and outside the classroom. Through her work with Ideal Me Enrichment Foundation as one of the directors and educational coordinator, she believes her platform is not only to empower, but through education, she can motivate youth and adults to be their best self. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Ursula Urak. Urak? I think it was Urak. Yes. <laughs> Hello. You're good, you're good. Hello, thank you for having us. Welcome yeah. back to the show. This is I not know. your first time here. <laughs> no, but different crown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes. thank you for having us again. Thank you for being here. All right, let's do our, our and our second guest is a first generation Canadian of Guyanese heritage. And uh, I'm splitting this, there we go. It's Guyanese heritage. Born and raised in the Canadian prairies, she attended the University of Saskatchewan, where she graduated with high honors and is a member of the Golden Key International Honor Society. She's a model and actress, and she taught English and drama on Tanzania. That's cool. cool. Her hobbies include knitting, traveling, and listening to music. And her favorite artists include Elvis, awesome, the Backstreet Boys, Nickelback, Randy Travis, Five Finger Death Punch, and Reba McIntyre. Her platform is Epilepsy Awareness, and she intends to use her reign supporting epilepsy awareness groups and fundraising for girls' education in developing nations. These are causes that has been that she's been involved in for several years and are dear to her art, her heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the sit down. Janice McGregor. Hello. Hi, thank you for having us today. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, and now let's meet our our third guest. Our third guest is 11 years old and a youth ambassador for 100 and uh, the 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 last two letters on hundred are capitalized, so it's like hundred because I think it's a well, it's an educational organization based in Helsinki, Helsinki, Finland. Uh, she's an ambassador for the clothing line Camellia Couture, and is an international runway model. She's also an international speaker, having spoken in Africa, Europe, and North America. She is a 2019 Diana Award holder and has won multiple other awards for community service. She's the founder of a social enterprise called Marigold's Heart Garden and makes and sells headbands. The proceeds have been used in the past to sponsor a family from Syria as a group of five sponsorship and to help the homeless in Calgary. Currently, she's sponsoring a student in Kenya for four years of secondary school. She hopes to return to Kenya in December 2022 to attend the student's graduation. She was an International Scholastic Kids Press Kid reporter for 2019 and 2020. And she plans Wait, did you say she's 11? She's 11. And, and she has, okay, sorry, keep she going. She seems to have done going. a variety of things. Yes. Yeah. She plans to sorry. continue her community work and is currently working on a global project on the Convention on the Rights of the Child so children worldwide know their rights. She wants to inspire women and girls to find what they are passionate about and to give back to their community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marigold Moyek. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for having me. How are you 11 and have all of these accomplishments? Like, I'm not going to say my age, but my accomplishment list is not as high as yours. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, all of you guys, welcome to the show. Uh, so, I guess we should start things off to... Uh, you know the reason that we're interviewing the three of you all here together even though you know reading your bios we could easily have each of you as individual guests and it would be a very fun okay. show um but the reason we have the three of you together is because all three of you are part of the miss regal world pageant yes and first off congratulations this is a recent win for all of you congratulations on your new crowns they're so beautiful yeah so those much. are nice thank you so, so, so Miss Regal World, sorry yes. Scott, no, I was gonna say, yeah. happened, it happened all virtually, right? Mm-hmm. How, how was that experience? 
For me, it came at a perfect time because um, I was teaching and then we just had to switch to online teaching and Victoria George Vale, the director, she messaged uh, me and reached out and I said, sure, I love pageants and obviously we can't do any live right now, so I'm going to do it online, try this out. And so it was just a combination of meetings, Zoom chats, uh, online posts, collaborations from April to August and we got to know each other really well and um, in, on August 7th the winners were chosen out of over a hundred um, girls from around the world. Wow. So this is the, this was a, a completely online virtual pageant. Yes. And, uh, obviously created because of uh, this crazy time that we're all living in which makes uh, which makes uh, in-person interaction and certainly large-scale events not really a possibility. Um, so I, I've never really heard, I don't know if this, is this a common thing? Like I, this is the first time I've heard of a fully virtual pageant. Um, is this something that any of you guys have ever participated in before or was this sort of your first time drawing something like this? First time I'd ever heard of it. Um, I mean, there have been online photo contests, but I've never heard of an international pageant that was like a full pageant that was completely online. I don't know about you ladies, what about you? No, it's, I've never heard, I, I assume there could be because anything's possible in the world, but <laughs> it was the first time for me to hear about it and I said, why not? You know, I get to continue to do what I love. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marigold? Yeah, um, I've never seen anything like this before, like a fully online pageant, but it was really, like, really, really fun. Like, you got to tape a really nice video of, like, you walking in a nice outfit, but it was really shocking. Like, I never found something like this before in my life, like, a fully online pageant. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, we know Ursula has done many pageants. Have you two also done pageants in the past? Yes, I have. Uh, the first one I did was in 2007. It was Miss Canada International. Then I did Miss World Canada 2008. Then I took a little break and um, I came back in 2018 for International Miss. I was International Miss Canada. And now this. Awesome. Um, for me, oh sorry. No, no go okay. ahead. No, there's a, there's a huge delay. Don't okay. worry about it. Yes. Okay. Um. So also, yeah, I I have done pageants before. Uh, in 2016, I was Little Miss Calgary. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was really really fun, and I got to go to a whole bunch of um, stampede breakfasts, and I got to meet a whole bunch of cool people. And also, that's when I got into public speaking, too. Um, so then after like um, a couple years after that, I also competed in Little Miss Calgary, but for preteens. Um, someone else won that, but OK. And anyways, now <laughs> I have this title. So Perfect. yeah, I have done patents in the past. And yeah. That's amazing. So we have three title holders from three different parts of Canada and yep. three different time zones. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Canada represented. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, two of us are representing Canada, so myself and Marigold. And Janice is representing Guyana. And Emily, who's based in the UK, is representing Vietnam. Oh, wow. It's a whole international thing. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. Well, it's because so this is literally it's anyone in the world could join, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we had girls from I think every inhabited com continent. There wow. were girls from Australia, Asia. I represented South America. There were a lot of Americans and Canadians, a lot of Europeans. Uh, there was one lady from South Africa. So I think every inhabited continent was represented. Cool. That's awesome. I guess probably just not Antarctica. There were no penguins in the past. <laughs> no penguins. <laughs> but there was over 120 girls. Yeah, over 105. Yeah. Wow. That's um like, that's a high number, right? Most pageants won't have that many people in it. Is that accurate, Regine? 
That's accurate. <laughs> there's four categories, right? So mm -hmm. we each def uh, represent a different age group. Mm -hmm. Which, okay, that makes more sense then because, uh, so for instance, when I did Miss Universe Canada, there was around 30 of us and that was just one division. So say 30 per division, makes sense. Yeah. So walk me through a little bit about um, what was actually involved? Because obviously, you know, your your regular pageant, you've got a stage, you've got a big room, an audience, and there's, you know, your various, you have to come out in different, uh, there's the evening gown sometimes, sometimes there's a, you know, swimwear, a Q&A sometimes. So what was, what was similar about this pageant to sort of your regular pageant and what sort of things were completely different? So the similarities are you send in an application form, uh, your photos, and um, and then you sort of had, we didn't have interviews, but we had Zoom chats. So, you know, we were asked questions. And uh, the difference is, is that we sent in a video um, that, will, that was judged initially. And then it, what, the girls went down to like a semi-final. And then we had to send in another video with uh, a little speech and our walk. Okay. And then, then we were judged on that. I see. So you, so you sent in the first video and then if you kind of advance to the next part, then you got asked to send in a, another video. Yes. Basically, uh, like an interview, well, a Q&A, basically an onstage Q&A. Um, yeah, but what was different and refreshing was that there was no swimwear. <laughs> um, there was an evening gown, which was fun. Uh, I wore the same. I wore. I wore the the evening gown I wore in a different pageant, like two years ago. So, I mean, it was very relaxed in the mm -hmm. sense that we weren't. You know, we were more of a family. I got a family sense from us. We weren't competing against each other as much as competing together. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was that was very refreshing. So what made you girls decide to compete in Miss Regal World, especially since it's brand new, you know, nothing about it. What made you guys want to join? Well, for me, um, <laughs> I've kind of been fangirling Ursula for a while. She's she's pageant royalty in Canada. She is. Uh, and oh. I actually learned a pageant from her Instagram. And I was like, Ursula wouldn't get involved in anything shady. She's a smart woman. <laughs> she, she would not get involved in anything that's you know, dangerous or a ripoff or, you know, anything that might have a scandal in it. So if Ursula is involved, I want to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I learned about it from your Instagram story, Ursula. <laughs> so and Ursula, then I, how did you learn about it? <laughs> Um, Victoria reached out to me and um, I sort of just looked on the website and I just thought sure why not it's it sounds good and there's already girls involved so I sent in my application in about April and um, then I started posting once everything was confirmed and yeah like it was just such an amazing experience especially during this weird and uncomfortable time in our lives it just it was like another uh, family I had online, right? Because I've never met anybody, but I've had I had the second family that I would go to every day, and I see their posts and their comments, right? So, just like Janice said, it became like a big family, girlfriends from all over. That's awesome. How about you, Marigold? Uh so I discovered the Rico World pageant over Instagram, actually, <laughs> um, and. I really wanted to make a whole bunch of friends like all over the world and mm -hmm. I decided that yeah I wanted to try for this and yeah this is an amazing community like it's such a like nice warm welcoming loving caring community like we always like are hyping each other up in the comment section and it's just like a really nice family to um a second family to have that's awesome very cool I mean it's uh 
I think it's an awesome thing because uh, I like how you guys are saying it was it didn't feel like a competition I think it was more um, this you know pandemic has really made it, it can be very isolating you know especially because a lot of people well, we're not supposed to go out and go anywhere and, and mm -hmm. uh, but what's nice is at least because of the the you know social media and the ability that to, to communicate with people all over the world we're at least able to still make those social connections even if we can't do that in person so it sounds like this uh this pageant did that for you guys so that's really that's really cool um do you guys know is this is this a pageant that um do they plan to continue to do these um or is it more like something that was made for sort of the pandemic or is it a new thing that you think will continue on it will be continued uh they'll be doing it next year in person uh -huh. so it'll continue but those girls will, will get to meet each other in person and i plan on going down for it too <laughs> going to be in england oh nice and i plan on going to that so i'm looking forward to meeting the girls from this year who will be competing again next year as well as the new girls next year that's awesome. exciting a brand new... Yeah, and it was also a new... Sorry. Oh, yeah, go, 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 yes. I was just saying, it was also a new experience, right? So, you know, um, there was an outline of everything, but, you know, it was so exciting because you just never knew what was going to happen. And, and it April, May, June, July, August, it was five months of, you know, being together and gaining camaraderie and just figuring out the whole system together with Victoria, the director. So, I mean, do you, now that you've done an online pageant and an in-person one, is there, do you like preference. one more than the other? Do you have a preference? I like meeting the other girls in person. I don't regret doing this at all, but, and I enjoyed every moment of this one, but I really missed getting to meet everyone in person. Now, I, I only live like, six hours away from you, Marigold. And Ursula, I'm often in Toronto, so I'm sure we'll meet up soon. But as for our teen, Miss uh, Junior Teen, she lives in London and I've only been in England once and that was during a layover. <laughs> so I guess I won't meet her until next year, but with you two, We'll be seeing each other soon. I think for me, it was fun because this allowed me to sort of interact and improve my techno technological skills, right? <laughs> Everything was done online, right? Between teaching and this online pageant, I, you know, I became tech savvy. But what I did miss is being on stage, but we did have the video of us walking, right? In our evening gowns which kind of, um, you know, balanced it out. But I do miss the stage portion because I feel like, you know, this is where I sort of come out and shine, depending on the day, not always, but, you know, I, I love no, being on stage. No, you do. Stage. You do always. <laughs> <laughs> I love being on stage and just showing my, my outfits and just showing my personality in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, being on stage and, uh, you know, having that audience feedback and the atmosphere of a, a crowd setting is obviously its own special thing um actually one thing that i would would mind asking is so obviously Wait, so you said yeah i get marigold to answer first oh yeah sorry go ahead go ahead marigold <laughs> yes sorry sorry um i think this pageant was fun and is fun because there are a whole bunch of like different activities that i get to do now that i have this title and yeah, I have a new community of people. I made way more friends and I'm more closer with the people who I already knew over online. Awesome. Cool. Okay, Scott, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna ask, oh, by, oh. hello, Silreen, welcome to the show. Hello, Silreen, HGH Claps. Hi, thanks for tuning in. All you guys, thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button if you would, if you're enjoying the show. Um, but one thing I was gonna ask is, again, sort of in comparing the virtual to the online, was there because you guys were saying there was like a, it was like a, a five month stretch or so where you guys were kind of working together and things. Were there elements that um, that they that you had to do for a virtual pageant that you thought, oh, that's kind of neat that you'd like to see incorporated into an in person 
pageant? Like, is there something that maybe they did because it was a virtual pageant that you thought, oh, that would be really neat if they did that in a regular pageant? Was there anything like that or I don't know? Just... I think leading up to it where we were really bonding online, I think that would be great for um, in-person pageants because I mean, I know that for me, I would set an alarm to wake up at 2.30 in the morning so I could see what those girls over in Europe were posting at like 9.30 their time wow. as they were starting <laughs> just because they were so positive and they were, it was such a loving atmosphere. I just wanted to see what they were doing. So I would wake up at 2.30 and join in on, on their conversations and I mean I would love to see that with in-person pageants as well that getting it to form a sisterhood starting months in advance yeah that is true because most pageants I mean I, I do know that is, is hosted pageants and I know Regine as well will say like you you do bond often with with the people in a pageant even an in-person one but it's not usually over like months and months period right because it's not usually quite that long a setup is that accurate regine or am i wrong there um some pageants you know ahead of time who are competing so you can obviously add them on social media i know for galaxy i knew about ursula the minute our she was one of the first people that were posted so i was like "Ooh, who's ursula and then i was second so um we already had that connection prior to going into the competition, but some pageants are different than others. Um, but I do understand what you mean by getting that bond with the girls because it's not something that you experience elsewhere, I find. Like I can work in other places and not have the same bond that I have when I compete in different pageants. So I totally get what you mean. <laughs> yeah, people don't understand like pageants, like we have, we have a community, right? Just like every other group, but a pageant community is not just beauty, it's, it's brains, it's camaraderie, it's wanting to, the world to be a better place, mm -hmm. and working towards that with our appearances and collaborations and fundraising and charity work. And so, you know, and people just see this crown and this sash and they have this opinion. And I've had, I've had, to, I've had it said to me many times, oh, I, before I met you, I had this opinion of you. And uh, once they met me, they're like, oh, I, you know, all this glitz and glam, you know, I'm still a nice person. Like, come get to know me. Don't look mm -hmm. at this and have a judgment, you know. And I usually find that people have a judgment with women who are older because now I'm 43 and people are like, why are you wearing, wearing a crown, you know? And it's like, just get to know me. Get me, get to know my purpose in life. I just want to help other people. And this is, this is my format of doing that. Would you make fun of a hockey player for his hockey stick in his jersey? No, this is, this is my tool. This is exactly. my like, uh, impact in life. How about you, Marigold? Uh, yeah, totally the same as Janice. I think we should, in the real life pageant for next year, definitely like keep the bonding like pre before the like scores are like um, said, uh, because it's definitely important to like. Um, have a bond with the people who you're competing with and it doesn't even feel like you're competing with people because you're competing like as a group and it's like they're your friends because they are uh, and I definitely think that's very important in pageants so I think that we should definitely keep that in the next one next year. Going back to what Ursula said People do have these misconceptions about pageants and about pageant girls and pageant women. You know, they think that we're catty and that we hate each other and, you know, we're out to sabotage each other. But, like, the pageant's over now. The scores are final. The winners have been selected. It's over. We're still in contact with each other, though. We're still in contact with girls who weren't fi finalists. Like, we're friends. We're sending each other playlists, like music playlists. You know, we're doing all of these things. And I remember on our first Zoom call, um, I said something that 
uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter what it was, but it was um, something that I was more vulnerable about. And as soon as that call was over, within 10 minutes, I got all of these supportive messages from people around my age and older. And it was like, wow, you don't get that in real life from women who you've never met in person. But I'm getting these messages from women all over the world mm -hmm. and they're being so supportive. And it was, you know, it totally defies the stereotype and the three of us know that those are just stereotypes. But, you know, people outside of the pageant community don't get it. Actually, just this week, just a few days ago, someone asked me if, you know, in pageants, if we still... Uh, sorry, uh, Marigold, uh, I um, forgot your age and uh, I don't know the age of your general viewers uh they asked me this person asked me if we uh do s still do inappropriate things with donald trump and it's like well i personally never have and i don't know anyone who has in the past yeah but you know they have these ideas about us yeah, and that's the thing, right? With anything, there's a, there's some negativity, right? With any sort of group or with any sort of profession. And unfortunately, like part of my thing is I want people to realize that pageant girls, we are strong, we are smart, and we are here to help each other. Um, you know, there are always going to be bad apples, mm -hmm. but I think we just have to, you know, do what we can and be the best that we can be so that... Uh, there's a better message out there because I feel Canada is still a little bit traditional in the ways of its thinking towards pageants But hopefully it's changing because I do see a bigger pageant community in Canada forming mm -hmm. So you were talking about what you see in the future in terms of pageants What are you girls looking at doing with your title for the rest of the year? I'm going to be promoting epilepsy awareness. I, I do that every day day even before I won this just by waking up mm -hmm. and living a normal life. I, li I live a normal life and I have epilepsy so I'm promoting epilepsy awareness as well as anti-racism. Uh, like I mentioned earlier I did pageants in the past and then I came back in 2018 mm -hmm. and that was for a civil rights Project because no one cares about Janice from Saskatchewan, <laughs> but when yes, you're angry, <laughs> then people will people will listen to you. And I worked on a civil rights project in Mississippi, and uh, I plan on continuing with anti-racism and um, epilepsy awareness and. Also, I, I volunteer at a school in Tanzania, and we're currently building a school for girls. Nice. So fundraising for that school for girls, as well as teaching in Tanzania. Awesome. How about you, Marigold? Um, <clears throat> I think I'll definitely be using my title to spread awareness about like self-love and self-confidence and definitely do like more projects with my title and also i'm working on this video that has i think about 45 youth in total wow. um about the crc which is the convention of rights on the child <clears throat> so the crc is basically just a long list it's a long art like it's a long list of different articles and each article is like a right each right for children um and these articles or rights apply to the countries that have ratified the crc and yeah um i'm looking forward to finishing that video it's almost done and yeah more maybe more projects in the future awesome how about you ursula uh first and foremost i want to continue promoting the miss regal world brand here in canada whether through online appearances such as your show or in person if possible to do so 
Um, also, um, continuing my message with Ideal Me Enrichment Foundation for youth and adults to be their best self. You know, um, also through education, you know, promoting education as a teacher. I, I want the message out that education is important and to stay in school and try your best, you know, because there are students who are online at home and those are who are in school and we just, you know, I feel like we've already lost some educational uh, education over the years, so I want students to maintain their education. And just my overall message to be one's best self, because um, having gone through body image issues, infertility, um, you know, uh, my love comes from my pain, so that I'm, and I want to continue that uh, over the year and hopefully touch more people's lives with my story. Wonderful. All three of you guys, I think, are great um, uh, representatives of the pageant and of just good people in general. So, <laughs> um, Regine, let's do the ad break and then we'll <laughs> come back with more. People who are just tuning in, we're here with uh, three title holders of the Miss Regal World pageant. And uh, today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was brought to you by uh, some very important people. And, and those people are, of course, our fantastic advertisers who make this show possible. Uh, yeah. Regine. Yes, Scott. Do you want to find out what your home is really worth? Maybe. Are you buying, selling, investing, or renting a home? I might be. Then Jennifer C., realtor at Home Life Culture Link, is here to help. Call or text Jennifer today at 647-403-8887. Don't mm -hmm. deal with just anyone. Speak to a professional. Jennifer C. at Home Life Culture Link. To see your current listings, visit homelifeculturelink.com. Mm -hmm. The Mortgage Godfather is here to give you advice with any mortgage needs you may have. And he will shop to find you the best mortgage. Nino Saimeka, mortgage agent. He'll give you an offer you can't refuse. I'll give you an offer you can't refuse, Regine. Mm -hmm. Find out more <coughs> at mortgagegodfather.ca or call 905-604-6955. And it was brought to you by Jewelry Forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom-made jewelry, repairs, and they change watch batteries all done on site. And we've got an amazing deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? Yes, we do, Scott. If you guys go in and don't forget your masks, let them know that Scott and Regine sent you and you'll get 15% off the entire purchase. That's right. One, five percent, 15 percent off. Tell them Scott and Regine sent you, and you'll find something beautiful in that beautiful shop. Find out more at yeah. jewelryforever.ca. And we, of course, need to tell you guys, our 100th episode is coming up next week. And to celebrate that milestone, Jewelry Forever has donated a beautiful white <laughs> gold diamond ring look at that shiny mm -hmm. thing Regine. look at it shine and sparkle in the sunlight it's, it's stunning it really so it's, is it is it's 14 karat white gold um and just the diamond on it is stunning i don't know who wouldn't want it and i mean if you don't want it christmas is just around the corner hanukkah yes. kwanzaa it's just around the corner um give it to your mom or your sister or your aunt or your grandma because anyone would want that that's right. Or if so, you're a guy and you want it, I mean, go for why it. Not? And I also know that Jerry has mentioned that regardless of the size of your finger, he will size it for you for free. Oh, wow. So, Look at that. So if I were you guys, go onto our Instagram after the show. You'll find the original post. Yes. It's a picture of the ring that says giveaway. Um, all you guys have to do is follow us. Uh, the sit down radio show on instagram as well as jewelry forever make sure you follow both of us and then leave a comment um of three of your friends and as a bonus you can also mention who your favorite guests are 
So we currently have three guests on our show right now, if this is your first time watching. So you can mention them. Or you can mention any fun memory you've witnessed over the last 99 episodes. That's right. So it's only on Instagram. You got to be on Instagram, people. But make sure you're following. The Sit Down Radio Show. Mm -hmm. Find the contest post. Like that post. Tag three friends. And make sure you're following Jewelry Forever on Instagram. You got to do all of those things. And then, of course, obviously, tune in for the draw next week, October 11th. Somebody's winning that ring. Ice. Welcome, Ice, to the show. Yes, that does look like something good. Indeed it is. <laughs> Anybody can win it. And again, if you want to get a bonus entry, so you'll get two entries to the draw, comment on that post who your favorite guest was. And if you're, uh, yeah, you can um, watch all of our past episodes. That way you can choose who your favorite guest uh, was as well. So make sure you enter 100 episodes, people. Incredible, incredible. Regine, it's, uh, a it's pretty amazing. I was gonna say there's a lot of Lucas Hassel fans that have been watching or joining our contest. Yes. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Lucas Hassel fans tuning in. Make sure you tune in. Oh, Israel Scott is here as well. Hey Israel Scott, welcome to the show. So everybody everybody make sure you enter into the uh, contest happening in uh in uh, just a week away. You have one more week it's to crazy. enter the contest over Instagram, so make sure you do. Um, mm -hmm. so we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with our guests from the Miss Regal World pageant, an all online pageant where uh, people from all over the world were able to, were able to tune in and uh, participate mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in a pageant. Despite the fact that there's a pandemic, you were able to be in a pageant from the uh, comfort of your own home. Um, actually, we yeah. didn't actually say what each person's title was, did we? So why don't we get, get no. your, your actual titles? And people in the chat, let us know uh, if you have any questions for our candidates, or I guess now our pageant winners. They're winners. Um, let us know, and we can ask them. Uh, but yeah, let's let's hear. What, what are your individual titles? Mine is Ms. Regal World. So my category was 39 and up. 39 years old and up. I'm Miss M I S S Regal World, and I believe I was the oldest in my age category, which was 18 to 38. You don't look it, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not 38 yet, okay. but I'm not exactly 18 either. And uh, I was born in Edmonton, Alberta, but I was representing Guyana in the pageant. Awesome. Um, my title is Miss Junior Regal World, and the age court category for this title is 12 and under. 12 and under. And so there was also a teen division, correct? Yes. Wonderful. And Emily has that title, but sadly she can't join today. <laughs> It's okay. We understand she's in the UK, so they have a completely different time zone. Yep. And um, hopefully we'll get her on the show one day with Victoria. You cool. will love both of them. They're, Victoria is an amazing woman. She's so accomplished. And Emily is just a wonderful girl. And just trading DMs with her and her mom. She's a wonderful young lady. You would love her on the show. Well, we'll make sure that cool. happens. Yeah, we'll make that happen. <laughs> um, Ice in the chat. I mean, it's kind of a, Ice. I think he showed up a little bit later, but he goes, "How did y'all win?" So I guess, well, they competed in an. It was an online. We could sum up. It was an online pageant. So each of you guys had to submit uh, videos of a. Uh, so of, pictures uh, and videos and an application, and I guess over the course of five months, you know, um, the. Z the Zoom calls, Zoom question and answers. Um, Janice, Mary Gold. What else? We were judged really on that photo and the two videos for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think just the overall presence, I think, um, over the five months. The photos were a very uh, small part of the overall scoring. I think it was like 20% 20, 20 or something like that. Like. That's still a big chunk, considering it's a photo. <laughs> yeah, well, I was really relieved that it was relatively small because 
it really allowed us to be scored on our personality and you know what we value versus how we look so that was refreshing and i loved that there was such a wide variety with a diversity in terms of ethnicity size um one of the runners up in my division is a plus size model and she's absolutely gorgeous and she was a runner up and i mean i'm only five somewhere between five four and five five and a half <laughs> and that's typically short <laughs> for pageantry but there was such a wide variety and of girls and we even had a transgender lady and i just loved the I love the diversity and I think that having such a small amount, such a small part of our score based on photos really allowed for that diversity. Mm -hmm. cool. Sorry, Marigold, you were saying something earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I think totally we were judged off of our personality and not just off of our looks and our appearances because there was on the last video that I submitted for the audition part, um, after I was a finalist, uh, we had to say like about, I think about one minute about ourselves and about what we're passionate about and like about us and not just like show off like our face. And like, we actually got to talk about like how, like what kind of person we are and what we do in our life. That's awesome. Very cool. So there you go, Ice. I think that hopefully that answers your question. Oh, Janice, mm -hmm. I want to ask you. You're from. You're, you said you're from Alberta originally, and you're in Saskatchewan. Or? I was born in Edmonton. Go Oilers! Well, I guess once the season starts, go Oilers. <laughs> uh, but now I live in Saskatchewan. That's correct. Are you familiar with Saskatoon berries? I am. Saskatoon berries. So I had only heard of them. I, I literally. Only, oh, sorry. What were you saying? Uh, yes, you can eat the berries straight or uh, like we, my family, like we, I sometimes do it and my mom sometimes turns it into jam oh. um, or syrup. I, I've, I'm not a big fan of the syrup, but it's really good. Oh. And I like I, the jam. I'd never heard, I literally heard about them for the first time this year. I'm in Toronto. I'm born and raised in Toronto my whole life. Um, but I only heard about them. I don't know if you know the show Heartland. You know, it's like a CBC show. Yeah, it's like right outside of Calgary. Oh, there you go. Well, so I've been I've been watching that show recently, and just because of that show, they kept mentioning Saskatoon berries, and every time they mention it, I was like, "What are those? I've never even heard of a Saskatoon berry." And then because of that, I actually I was at Costco, and I for the first time ever I saw Saskatoon berry jam, so I bought it, and it's it's good, but. I'm just, oh, glad you liked it. Yeah, it's good. It's just it's, it's just weird that uh, you know, it sounds like it's a very common thing, um, you know, just to the west of us here. But I've never even I don't know. I've never even heard of them. I'm curious if, if other people in Ontario are familiar with Saskatoon berries. But no. I never heard of it until I moved to Saskatoon. I'm no longer in Saskatoon. I'm in a small town now, but I never heard of Saskatoon berries until I moved to Saskatoon. Huh. Nice. Well, Regina, have you heard of them? Or have any of no. you guys heard of Saskatoon <laughs> berries outside of? No. no. Marigold has. Okay, Marigold has. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're. Yeah, they're, I learned um... about them in social studies class. Oh. oh. <laughs> What do they what do they teach you about them? Um, we were just like talking about social, uh, sorry, natural resources, and then we oh. saw them in the textbook. So <laughs> interesting. The, the curriculum nice berry. has changed since we've been in social studies class, Scott. That's why. <laughs> I guess. I guess so. Yeah, they are. Um, they're <laughs> they're a less because uh, I from so the Costco jam we got it's it's not a sweet a flavor but I feel like it's more mm. complex it's a more complex berry than like your regular like a strawberry jam or a raspberry jam so that's a good way of putting it yeah that's a good way. <laughs> and you know what you should try the syrup if you can find the syrup in Toronto 
I think you'd like it. All right, cool. I'll have to watch for it. I'll have to... Because like I said, I, I, I'd i never heard of them, except then we started watching Heartland again because, you know, we're binge watching so many different things because we're always at home. So Heartland is currently on the on the, on the the TV quite a bit. And they, they talk about Saskatoon berries a lot. And I'm like, what are those? So I actually Googled them, but I couldn't find anywhere to get them. And then I happened to be at Costco and there they were, which is... Uh, Interesting. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if I saw anything else. Like, I don't know if they had... Uh, syrup or anything else i only saw the jam when i was at costco but uh there you go saskatoon well next year you'll have to come here and we can just pick them (laughs) yeah seriously all four of you there you go that would be cool yeah because i don't even know if they i don't know if they grow here or not i've never seen them i've never i don't know i don't know but there you go scott yeah (laughs) saskatoon (laughs) berries Okay, so speaking of, um, well, other, we were speaking about the pandemic, but I am curious to hear about um, how, you know, obviously we've, we're, we're, you're in a pageant that exists out of this thing, but how has it impacted, I guess, your lives in other parts of, I know, Ursula, you're a, you're a teacher, so I actually would be curious mm-hmm. to hear what, how it's been, and also Marigold, I want to hear from you as well, because you're a student, a student. going through this, <laughs> so wh- whichever wants to go first, I'd, we'd love to hear about your experiences. Okay, go ahead, Marigold. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that this pageant and this title has impacted my life because it's brought a lot of good things to me, like a whole bunch of new projects and a whole bunch of new friends. And also it's, um, yeah, definitely made me more close with a whole bunch of people who I knew in the beginning of the pageant. Mm -hmm way more close and way more friends online definitely and also yeah way more opportunities that came from the pageant uh yeah so so Marigold how how has this pandemic uh besides the pageant affected you in terms of like school and just all that fun stuff like are you doing virtual learning or are you guys in class because you're in a different province Right, so yeah. we're not familiar with what's going on over there. So, uh, yes, I am doing, I'm not doing online, but I am doing like in real life school mm-hmm. because uh, I don't know, I feel like it's better to like be socially like with people because I haven't seen like besides from like when I just started school, I haven't seen people in a very long time because yeah. of like the quarantine and everything. Um, but this pandemic has definitely impacted my life like very much because at school um, I have like a runny nose so then they like, literally like they wouldn't let me go to school so I had oh, to take no. a coronavirus test and then I had to like wait like three or four like two or four, two to four days until I got the results and I missed like half a week of school because I had to like test myself for coronavirus Mm -hmm. and if I like if I tested negative I could come back so then when I came back I like I had to catch up on a lot of schoolwork and also it's way more harder at school definitely with coronavirus because um I can't even see my friends in other classes like I can only see my like the people in my class so yeah it's really different (laughs) And is it fewer people in the class as well? Because they're like limiting the numbers? Uh, no, I think it's about the same amount of them. It might be a bit more or less because we have to like socially distance the desks. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, <laughs> I was like fucked out for a minute. Um, yeah, but I think there's a bit of less students because we have to like space out the desks because we're not allowed to be too close to each other. Mm-hmm. And you're in grade six, right? Yeah, I'm in grade six. Wow, that must be hard. Like, I know my brother, he's also in grade six, but he's doing virtual learning. And you miss a few days and you have a lot of homework to catch up on. Yeah, so I can only imagine how that must have been for you. It's definitely how about a you, weird Ursula? Time. As, yeah, how about yeah you, it is. So, you know, uh, so I'm back because of seniority, I get to teach in class. Uh, some of my coworkers are teaching online because half the population of my school chose to go online. So 
I, my grade has changed two to three times with different oh, wow. students. So I came in thinking I would be a four or five this year. And then it turns out the week before school, I became an eight with uh, grade eight with 11 students. Then I went up to 14. I'm uh, sorry, 14, it went down to 11. So I was like, ooh, this is nice, you know, nice spaced out, everyone's safe. Uh -huh. And then the following week, I got a 7 to 8 with 20 students, which is still fine. But some of them are still waiting to go online because our school did have cases, not in my class. But, you know, that scared some parents. So I may lose five students tomorrow. Wow. So having said that, their routine is all about safety. So when kids come in, I come in, we have to pre-screen. We have to sanitize before and after, you know, entering the classroom before they eat. You know, it's constantly sanitizing, constantly social distance. Uh, the school day is different. We have two out, the recesses are indoor, but we have two outdoor blocks where it's just my class that goes out. Mm -hmm. So we're like cohorted. So if anything happens, then our class is together. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any interactions. I mean, we see people in the hallway, but there's no interactions except for the two other teachers that come into my class to teach other subjects. Wow. So, yeah, I know we're doing the best we can in terms of safety and luckily, uh, thank goodness, I have an older class and they know the rules and they want to be there, right? Because they didn't like the online and they want to be in class, so they do their work, they're very respectful. Um, not that any, any other kid isn't respectful, but I, <laughs> as they're older, they understand they have to get their mask on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I walk by, there's a grade one class and they're doing well, as they're doing very well as well, but you know, you can see like they, they play with their masks, you know, like, so uh, luckily, you know, hopefully we don't get any more cases, but you know, mm -hmm. as you go in Toronto, our cases are rising. Yep. So yep. hopefully, I don't know, hopefully everyone say a prayer that something happens and the pandemic can just, you know. Disappear just, one day. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, be a history, but we're lucky because we are part of history. Right? That's like, true. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very unique time. Like this is our moment to be part of history. And I can say that I taught grade eight in the first year back at COVID with COVID and my grade eights, it's a monumental year for them as well. And, you know, so I, I try to do a positive spin on everything because let's face it, you know, that we're so, we can be so negative very quickly during this time. And we, we see people lose their temper really quickly out there, but mm -hmm. it's all about patience. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can keep rambling on. <laughs> Just stop me. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, it's a uh, it's a crazy time to uh, well to be doing anything really. But uh, I, I think you're the first person we've had on here who's actually like a, who's a teacher in the a system. Teacher. So it is it is interesting to hear um, hear from your perspective, uh, Janice. How are things? Mm -hmm. uh, how have things been affecting you? Well. One thing that's affected all three of us, as well as Emily, is we were supposed to walk in Madeira Fashion Week, but on, which was earlier, or last month in September. Uh, but fortunately, they, like, they've been so understanding and they've allowed us to do that next year. Awesome. But for me personally, I was supposed to be in New York Fashion Week which was also oh. recently, and oh. I did not get to do that. It was going to be my second time, but the shows that I was cast in uh, were canceled. So that was unfortunate. Also, theater is canceled, and I'm a total theater geek. I come alive on stage, although it's not really me. It's my character that comes <laughs> alive on stage, but that's been cancelled and who knows for how long yeah but i mean like yes. ursula said this is a part of history and mm -hmm. it i mean we can't deny the unfortunate parts there's a social element that i mean i agree with wearing masks i'm not an anti-masker but we, we lose a certain amount of our humanity through that because the, this area is so expressive and we lose a part of our humanity by not being able to see other people express themselves with a smile or a frown or whatever. And we also can't express ourselves that way. Um, 
also the social distancing is very difficult, especially since my family, we always get together for Easter. We weren't able to do that this year. Um, Thanksgiving is next weekend. (laughs) Yeah. So like, I mean, we can't deny the negatives, but in the end, this is something that we'll be telling future generations about. And hopefully we'll, people will learn from this soon because we're already in our second wave. Hopefully people will start learning and hopefully we'll have a vaccine soon. And then one day we can talk about this in a past tense after it's been eradicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The mask thing is weird because like you were saying, like, you know, I'm used to if I walk by somebody or like say you're in an elevator and like I'll, I'll usually give like a like this type thing, a little <laughs> nod and a smile. And how many times I've done it where I'm like, I I just do it. And then I had like, wait, that person didn't see my smile. Like they don't know that I just smiled at them. You know, you're like, why am I even smiling? Yeah. yeah. It's so, uh, so weird. I know. Well, I went to, I went to a funeral with a mask on in this pandemic and a fun case so ursula is right let's make a positive out of a negative um a positive thing about wearing a mask during a funeral is that you and this is don't quote me it was my cousin said masks are like built-in tissues they just capture everything (laughs) like ew but it's so true (laughs) i mean yeah it's technically i guess what they're doing yeah (laughs) you'd have to like wipe your nose every few minutes it's just yeah. all captured <laughs> there's a positive but and a negative that's it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, keeps it, it keeps it away from the other people that's the uh, that's the <laughs> idea there but, uh, yes. yeah it's 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 tough My and yeah we are in the second wave which yeah, I was thinking the numbers now I know in Toronto it's I scary. think well in Ontario it's they're the highest they've been like even at the height of when everything was locked down they weren't as high as they are right now mm-hmm. so my, my friend is telling me it's the positivity rate or something about the positivity rate that it's because they're testing more people now than they were mm-hmm. initially. So um, it may seem higher, but it's averaged out. So yeah, something with this, I got to pay attention more often, but <laughs> it's, it seems like a lot, but it's because they're testing more people. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's, well, it's just scary. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, the, the part that, that concerns me is that because um, the numbers were low for a while, but now that they've come up again, I mean, is is that uh, but the, the the restrictions that were in place are, are not where they were. So I, I feel like mm-hmm. they're not going to really go down in the same way that they did. That's my concern. Well, I know in the city of Toronto, there are talks about closing a lot of other, like closing stuff again. Um, in dining restaurants are probably going to be put to a pause and it's almost flu season if not we're already in mm-hmm. flu season so yeah. who knows what will happen yeah. I know well, I just, the symptoms are the same right so so let's just be grateful yeah. that we're not in America or any other country with high like we're not in the top five countries of COVID so true that's a good thing <laughs> yeah you know what the, the thing I'm struggling with the most I think is the I don't know how, like, anal I should be in, like, ser- social situations. So, for example, like, if I go, like, I wear my mask, and if I have to go into a store, which I try to avoid, but if I have to, I wear the mask, right? But, like, pretty much every single place I've gone, whether it's for work, whether it's for uh, shopping, or even just walking on the street, every single time I've seen at least one person, usually more, who's, like, not quite doing it quite in the right way you know like whether it's not really trying to maintain a distance from somebody or their mm-hmm. mask is over their nose or under their chin or or even if i'm speaking to they're somebody they're just not wearing a mask or they're just not wearing one or like and, <laughs> yeah. and, and i and i don't know how if i'm being overly cautious or they're not being it and i can so it's like so for example, if i'm walking even if i'm walking down the street and i'm walking on the sidewalk and i see somebody and sometimes if there's if there's lots of room i might even cross the street or something but if if nothing else i'll go to the side of the sidewalk you know and i do and most times the other person will kind of go to their side and they'll understand that we'll just we're gonna pass each other from a distance but then inevitably you'll always pass somebody who's just 
it's like it's not happening at all like you think Mm -hmm. there's you know and i and it's hard to it's hard for me to figure out who's right i mean i feel like i'm right but i don't actually know and then and it's okay, worse but... yeah what are you saying what are you saying Regine? no no go ahead finish first sorry well, i was Here gonna go. say and then it's 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 worse when you're interacting with people that you know because it's like you know do i have do i want to be the person who's speaking to my friend or like family member who's like hey stop stop coming close to me you know what i mean or yeah. your mask is under your like just keep what you know so like every five minutes am i going to be the one who has to sit there being like you know fix that well yeah well you spoke about family members okay so the funeral that i was i went to let me tell you how many people would come up to you and be like condolences and stick their hand out i'm like please put your hand away or they try to hug you and i'm like okay I accept your condolence. Just don't touch me, <laughs> please. Don't touch Erica. me. Yeah, but then they they don't. They they literally come towards you, and you have to like skirt. Like bye. Yeah. Like don't touch me. But it, it's I don't know if maybe because they consider us family that they're like, oh, I can hug you. I'm like I don't even hug my immediate family. I'm not gonna hug you. So luckily, I had pockets in my dress. So every time someone would stick their hand out, I'd be like, <laughs> my hands are in my pockets. Yeah. <laughs> But like I, I, I also don't understand why people think that right now it's okay to stick their hand out or to hug you or I'm like here's my elbow like hey like, yeah I don't get it. That's the thing, and I think it's a difficult thing because you know generally speaking, you know, in like regular society, ad- we're not in the business of like adults don't like scold other adults. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like we don't, we're not. It's not normal for me, especially with either people you know, to be like, hey, why you know, why are you doing that? You know? Oh, I did that. I'd be like, I tell one of my aunts or uncles, like, stop touching their hands. You're sanitizer. Like, yeah. stop it. Yeah. I don't know. It's always better to err on the side of caution. Mm-hmm. Like, because it would kill me if I got sick unknowingly because I wasn't following the rules to a family member or my niece and nephew who are under five. Like, mm-hmm. that would kill me, right? So, mm-hmm. people just have to err on the side of caution. And if you don't agree with it, um, you know, be the better person. Uh-huh. It's all about, you know, doing what's right for yourself and for everyone else, um, right? And that's what that, that's the gift that God gave us. He gave us free will, right? So we're going to have all these different opinions, and that's why it's hard for everyone to follow just one rule. Uh-huh. But I think, you know, in this case, just err on the side of caution. Definitely. For the two of you who are not from Ontario, um, what is COVID like in your provinces? Um... The cases are rising in Saskatchewan, but, well, especially in, um, I'm not going to say which, where my family lives, but no worries. <laughs> the public school system there, there were a few cases, and that was within just a few weeks of school opening, mm-hmm. so, and, um, even just from what I've observed, people are so relaxed about it. Like they're not wearing masks and it's, I mean, well, I did a photo shoot and one girl brought a friend to the photo shoot, which you don't do even under normal circumstances. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't bring your girl, your girlfriend to your nine to five regular job why would you bring to a photo shoot but at that time we were only allowed 15 people and we had between the photographer and the makeup artist and the other models we we were already at 15 and then she's bringing a friend and it's like and this was back in june i think mm-hmm. and it's like why are you doing this? We're in the middle of a global pandemic. We're in an enclosed indoor space. Why are you bringing another person? Mm -hmm. And I think that with Saskatchewan's second wave, a lot of it is just people not being as careful as they could be, Mm -hmm. whether that's deliberate because they don't think, because they think the COVID is a hoax. You know, I don't know anyone who's had it, so therefore it must be a hoax or them just not knowing any better. But as 
Ursula was saying earlier, it's better to err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. Or as Philip DeFranco on YouTube says in a less polite way, don't be stupid, stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I, that's what I find. I think you're right. They, a lot of people I know in Toronto, it's the case where they kind of talk about it like it's, like it's almost in the past tense, you know, and I understand it in that it, something's been going on for so many months. People are done with it. You know, they don't feel, COVID they don't feel fatigue. like they, yeah, yeah. Like they don't want to be dealing with this anymore, you know, mm -hmm. but uh yeah, well, I don't it's know. Reality, right? And it's like, you know, the mask won't kill you, but not wearing one might. Exactly. Right? Like, Marigold, how was it in Alberta? Um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure there's like um, one and a half thousand cases, maybe around 1,500 or 2,000, I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of people who don't wear masks in stores. Like uh, one time I went to like a Tim Hortons with my mom and there was like this woman who wasn't even wearing a mask and she was just like running around everywhere and she wasn't oh, social. Cringe. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> like she was not even speaking under her breath. Like she was literally like speaking really loudly and like pushing out air particles out of her mouth. Like, uh, <laughs> she's a breathy um, speaker yeah she was not being very uh, she was being a bit selfish because <clears throat> uh, I know sometimes the mask might not protect yourself from the virus but it protects other people from the virus um, if you do have it it will protect other people from it um, and if we all wear masks, we can all protect other people from it. And then that way we can protect ourselves from it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and this is not in like my actual province. It might have even been in the States, but I just saw it online. It's really crazy with these like anti-mask people. They're all like... Uh, screaming take off your masks take off your masks and they're not wearing any masks and they're running through the stores and like take off your masks you can't freeze with them on take them off like COVID is a hoax like even if you do wear a mask it, it's not going to kill you at all like it's just wearing a thin layer of caution or mm -hmm. fabric over top of your mouth and nose for a short time until you are a for a short time when you're in the public like it's definitely not going to make you stop breathing at all like no yeah. well it's yep, happening it's... where like there was that karen at i think it was michael's or fabricland in calgary and then in toronto just i think it was last week like, there was a rally mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. seriously you guys have nothing else to do on a weekend so you're gonna go to an anti-mask rally like i can think of it a thousand other things to do on a weekend even when not everything is open or not open to full capacity i can think of a thousand other things to do on a sunday other than go to an anti-mask rally yeah so, i mean it's happening every we're just being selfish yep it's uh you know speaking of the, the sort of the conspiratorial side of things have you guys seen this thing on netflix it's called um the social dilemma it's a documentary. I, I've seen it, but I haven't watched it. Like I've seen the yeah. Preview. It's um, it's it's worth watching, I think, especially now because it basically talks about um, how the algorithms in like our social media platforms work, and the way they're designed to um, uh, you know, to sell ads basically is what they're doing. But it ta it really goes into how it's uh how it's affecting and actually changing human behavior and uh in a way that uh like how you were talking about how there's you know the, the anti-mask movement and there's a lot of conspiratorial thinking is at an all-time high because of these social networks they're kind of creating these bubbles where people basically are getting b different information based on um sort of what's being suggested to them in different networks anyway i i, I recommend everybody watching it just because living in the world now like it was weird how 
I was watching this in, uh, at the same time I was watching it, I was scrolling on my phone. And then the, do the documentary starts talking about, you know, why that's so natural for us to sort of always be doing that. And I kind of was then aware of it in that moment. I'm like, oh, and then I, I suddenly felt like I wanted to put my phone <laughs> down when I was watching it. But that's weird. Anyway, I recommend watching The Social Dilemma, everybody, of all ages, because it's, it's affecting everybody. It's, uh, it's adding to this, how we don't, we, it's hard to tell what's true these days. It's why there's such a wide range of, of beliefs around, you know, this pandemic and the election as well. Just everything. It's, uh, it's worth watching. You should all watch it. I recommend watching The Social okay. Dilemma. Are you saying that social media is feeding you confirmatory information? Yes, exactly. Because so the the problem is that it's not um, the the platforms themselves. They have no interest in actually putting out anything that's true or false. It's not designed that way, right? It's only designed to um, give you something that will keep you watching. And that's where they add ads in, right? So if you search something about flat earth, the algorithm will suggest you another flat earth video because they think you'll watch that right and then or if you speak about something near your phone it will pick up on that and then ads will well there's that as well i mean that's that's a whole other part where they're gonna what ads they're gonna give you but but the actual algorithms themselves they're designed to just give you things that you'll keep clicking on so that's how you fall down that rabbit hole so it's uh yeah interesting and, and that's why it's so crazy why people will depending on what information where you're getting information from you'll believe completely different things right and uh it, it i don't know they just it talks about how it's really contributing to like why the political divide is so wide now as well because it's just so because people are basically only getting the information from stuff that's confirming what they've already been believing and exactly and then other sides are getting what they believe mm -hmm. and so it's contributing to just yeah. Anyway, I, w I suggest watching it, people. It'll it'll help you be aware a little bit about what's going on. You know, you're not the first person who's recommended it, so I think I think I will have to give it a watch. Yeah, it's it's not it's not very long either. I think it's only like maybe an hour and a half. But it, I mean, okay. I, I think a, I think a lot of the stuff in it is pretty like it, you're so, it's something I think we were all aware of, but it was just interesting seeing how. Um, how blatant that it is set up. And then there are things that you'll notice that maybe you've noticed about your own social media usage or stuff that you've noticed about, you know, platforms that you're on, but you didn't realize that that was actually very deliberately put there that way. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird thing. It's, uh, I think it's especially useful for people who, if you're, depending on your age, if you grew up in an age with, that you've never been without social media, interesting so anyway well i was in college facebook or when myspace came out so i remember the pre-social media age so i know that one thing that i do is i'll look at far right newspapers as well as more liberal ones and then the moderate ones because even if i don't do and i don't agree with most of the stuff in the far right ones. I want to see why other people have those beliefs because how am I supposed to have an intelligent debate or discussion with them if I don't understand where they're coming from? Yeah. And that's why sometimes I'm in communication with people who I have strong beliefs about one thing and they have strong beliefs on the other side but i stay in contact with them because how am i supposed to intelligently discuss something when i don't understand the other side you know whether it's oil and gas or climate change or immigration uh, which i mean my parents were immigrants they're naturalized canadians they were both immigrants so you know, I'm pro-immigration, but at the same time, I want to be able to understand the other side. And yeah. it's so easy and relatively true to just say, oh, those people are racist. 
And I mean, let's be honest, in a lot of cases, that is true. That That is the only reason why they're anti-immigration. You know, they're pro-European immigration, but anti-visible minority immigration. But just to be able to, you know, you know, I, I'm not expecting to be able to change their minds, but just in order to uh, communicate with them and hopefully share my perspective, I have to be able to understand their side. And it's the same thing with COVID. You have yeah. to understand why some Americans think that it's a violation of their constitutional rights to wear a mask and I have to understand why that Karen Fabricland in Calgary was so upset about having to wear a mask and being asked to leave Fabricland if if I want to be able to have a discussion about this and I've like I said I've heard people I know saying I don't know anyone who's had COVID so it must be a hoax so I have to be able to understand that perspective in order to convince them and even give them examples. Like, I don't know anyone who has AIDS, for example, but that doesn't mean that AIDS is a hoax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? and I think it's also important just to, um, I don't know, the, this thing, it, it kind of makes it easy to forget that every single person, even if you really disagree with them, they're, they're still you almost lose the the idea that that's another human being with just as complex and interesting and thoughts as you know you have and i think it's mm -hmm. easy to kind of easy you're almost encouraged to dismiss everybody else who kind of might think differently and think but you have to remember that they're you know the same as you in a lot of ways exactly. um, or almost in every way actually so <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this conversation got pretty deep, but I would say check out The Social Dilemma. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. So, ladies, back to the pageant. Where, if people who are watching are interested in learning a little bit more about Miss Regal World or would like to compete in next year's pageant, where can they find this information? So, we have an Instagram page at Miss, Miss Regal World, Facebook page, Miss Regal World. We also have a website themissregalworld.com or you can just contact the director Victoria George Vale on Facebook or Instagram as well. Wonderful. I'm really excited to see what you girls are going to be able to do with your title. Um, I myself, I know the difficulties of doing appearances virtually. Um, so I'm really excited to see where you guys go with all of this. Thank you. Thank you. We will try our best. <laughs> Same. We are. <laughs> yeah. We will, all the pageant girls are trying their best. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, wow, well, we've been going well. Yeah, this conversation was pretty long. That's good. I like it. I like that when that happens, it's uh, it means that it was an interesting show. So uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, do you guys, if if you want to, is there any um, individual social media stuff you guys wanna wanna plug for people to follow? If you have them, you don't have to. If you don't want to, but if anybody wants to, let me know. Sure. I, well, my Instagram is at Ms. Janice. Job. I'm going to have to start typing it into the comments and let auto. <laughs> uh, Mine is easy. Just at Miss, Mrs. Canada Goals on Instagram and Facebook. So Mrs. Canada Goals. Because you are Mrs. Canada Goals. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely is. Okay, so I'm at, at Ms. M S dot Janice J A N I C E underscore McGregor M A C G R E G O R and I'll just add that in the comments right now. Cool. Perfect. How about yours, Marigold? Um my Instagram is it's pretty easy, Marigold, so basically my name plus an S, Heart Guardian. <laughs> Heart Guardian, perfect. Heart cool. Guardian. Awesome. Hey, Regine, where can, can people find... Oh. My chat. oh, okay, wonderful. Oh, yeah, added that in there, cool. Hey, Regine, where can people find you? 
you guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at It's Regina Lena. And of course, also follow my pageant journey um, at Ms. MS Galaxy Canada on Instagram and Facebook. And you can also find me on YouTube. I know Scott has put all of the information in the description. So please follow me. I promise I will sub for sub if you do. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. How about you, Scott? You can find me right here where you're watching this very <laughs> show. YouTube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Scott Dion Brown. And uh, DLive.tv slash Scott Dion Brown. You can also follow me on... Am I pointing the right way? No, I'm not. <laughs> there. You can find me here on uh, Twitter and Instagram at uh, Scott Dion Brown. And uh, I don't really post on TikTok, not yet, but at Scott Dion Brown Official, you can find me on there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, guys, make sure you hit like on this video if you if you enjoyed it. Oh, sorry, don't forget Regina. to go onto our Instagram page um, and follow our follow our page. Follow Jewelry Forever and join our giveaway, which again ends next weekend. Um, I'm going to put a timeline or a deadline on it just because it will take a lot of time to input yeah. over 100 people into the draw. So cool. our draw is actually going to end at midnight, um, just so that it gives me the morning to put everything together. So, so midnight the Saturday you have before. Until the, you have until the end of Saturday, October 10th to add yourself to the draw and the draw will be live on a hundredth episode it's so weird to say 100 episode next week so are you ready for that scott a hundred episodes i mean i'm pretty pumped i, I want to make sure it's something special i'm probably going to make a like an alcoholic beverage for the show regine i'm probably going <laughs> to maybe or something 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 celebratory for sure so uh and we'll see we'll, we'll... You drop one off like that's not fair you can't just make one for yourself and then not yeah drop it off to, like, yeah maybe i'll have to <laughs> maybe i'll have to make a big well you know we're living in we're living in a, in a strange time so maybe everybody will have to make their own drink but you should make one too regina if you want maybe if you want i'll think about it we'll see how it goes <laughs> an irish oh. coffee <laughs> uh oh zai zai in the <laughs> chat uh oh. sorry what do you say uh janice <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw the um, tag hanging out the other side of the cup. So. That's good. Keep <laughs> drinking. Me too. There you go. Uh, Zai Zai Scott, I just watched your gaming chair reveal. Oh, thank you, Zai Zai. Yeah, you guys can check out my new gaming chair reveal. This is the chair here. <laughs> it's very comfortable. I love the lumbar support, but I did a, I did do an unboxing video of it, so you can check that out and see it. And uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we should probably wrap things up. I think we should wrap things up. Um, any final words from our guests? Anything you guys want to say to our audience before we uh, say good night or good afternoon? No, just thank you for having us. And um, just stay patient and kind to everyone. Yes, uh, and to you too, our host and hostess. Thank you so much for having us. To the guests, thank you so much for spending your Sunday with us. This it's been an honor to share your Sunday with you. And as our pageant motto says, keep positive and stay strong. Good advice. Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me. And I hope every one of you guys have a good day. And also for the viewers, uh, yeah, have a good day too. Or night or morning. <laughs> Wherever you are in the world. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you could have gone anywhere this Sunday morning or yeah, evening or afternoon or whatever it is. Um, yeah. If you're watching in Antarctica and you're a penguin, hello, thank you for tuning in. Um, but you could have watched any video online. You could have gone anywhere, but you came here and you tuned in to share your Sunday with us. So uh, we appreciate that very much. Thank you guys so much for being here. And uh, we'll see you guys next week for our 100th episode. 100 That's episodes. Crazy. Incredible. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, guys. I guess we'll say goodbye now. Bye. 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 Okay. 
outro is playing.